Hello everyone, I hope you're all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Chanel GST in the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Miko Girly 99 I was thinking about how one would move a collection, and then with the recent missile alert scare we had, we only had 12 minutes from the alert to take cover, but thank God it was just a mistake. It made me wonder if you had an evacuation plan for your collection. Now, I don't mean a duck and cover type of situation like we had, but one where you have time to gather your supplies and family into a car type scenario to just evacuate. With a collection as large as yours, how would you move it? Again, only if you had time, as quickly and safely as possible, or would you leave it all behind? I can't even begin to imagine what you guys were feeling, and the fact that you had to go through that is absolutely awful. Absolutely awful. Um, all right, so do I have an evacuation plan for my collection? And with a collection as large as mine, if I had time, uh, would I move it quickly and say, how would I move it quickly and safely? And, or would I leave it all behind? Uh, okay, so yes, once upon a time I did have an evacuation plan. It was actually when my collection was a lot larger. Uh, I set the timer so I would be able to grab all of my handbags, all of my SLGs, a few heirloom um, jewelry pieces, a few other things in the house, and I was out the door. You know, I got it down to a T. I had it down to a science. And I know that might sound kind of crazy, but it made me feel better. Uh, so now that my collection is a lot smaller, I can definitely still do that, even though I haven't had, uh, even though I haven't done, um, my, you know, my uh, my fire drill in quite some time. Uh, but I can still end up uh, doing it very very quickly if I had to but even with that said if th this goes back to what we were talking about last week with grabbing only one handbag if you had to evacuate or if uh, you know if, if something happened um, even with that said I do love handbags but if we had to evacuate I can I can honestly tell you whether you believe me or not I probably wouldn't step foot in this room I wouldn't step foot in this room because I would I would be so preoccupied with getting supplies and food and things that I needed for my family so so that we can be safe. Um, Robert, myself, and Edward, we all have uh, bug out bags. Uh, you know how Robert is with the whole backpacks and outdoors. We have bug out bags with supplies. And we have them ready to go if anything ever happens. We have uh, extra clothing in there. Uh, but I would be focused on food, first aid, all that other good stuff before I would even fathom a handbag. Because if we all had to be in our car, uh, you know, if we had a pile up into the car, I would not want to give space to a single handbag if it meant that one of my family members couldn't have a supply that we would need in the future if anything happened. And even if it ended up being precautionary that nothing happened and we were able to return to our homes, um, I wouldn't regret it for one second because my family's well-being will always, always come first. It is always my top priority. And, you know, I love the handbags and I talked about this in a few other Minx Mondays uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, I it just, it, they're just things to me. I think that they're beautiful, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think twice. I wouldn't set foot in this room. It would just be like, it doesn't exist. I would go straight to the pantry. I'd get the, the bug out bags. We'd grab food for, for Edward and we'd get some, you know, water for state and then we'd be gone. Even if we had time. I know that's what I would end up doing. Like I said, if you believe me, that's great. If not, that's fine as well. Uh, but no, even if I had time, I wouldn't, I wouldn't move up my collection. It would just stay exactly where it is. And if it was still here when I came back, that's awesome. And if not, I wouldn't feel bad about it. I wouldn't dwell on it and I wouldn't say I should have done this. I should have done that. Nope because that meant that I wouldn't be able to give space to a supply or something that my family needed. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I'd leave it all behind, even though I do have a, um, even though I do have an evacuation fire drill type of, uh, type of thing, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't come into effect. And I think that when something like that happens, um, you know, it, it, I think it's easy to say it's, you can plan for it, but once it happens, I think it's a completely different beast that, that you, I think it would hit, I think it would hit me by surprise type of situation. So 
Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that was able to answer your question. Next question from Brianna Conies. I've been following your channel for a while now and you've helped me decide that the pre-love market is the best choice for me at the moment to get my very first luxury bag. I was talking to my coworkers about Fashion File and how that's the direction I'm going with my purchase, but they made fun of me and said if I can't afford it new, I shouldn't buy the item and now I'm doubting my decision. What would you do in this situation? This is a fantastic question. I actually had something almost identical happen to me at my old job. I will never forget it. In this situation, I say you could do one of two things. You can ignore the comments and not entertain the conversation, or um, you could do what I did. <laughs> and sometimes your emotions get the best of you. Sometimes my mouth gets the best of me. And that's exactly what ended up happening. I started to go on and on. I said a few other choice words. Like I said before, sometimes my emotions get the best of me. Don't judge me. <laughs> but I just think it's hilarious. And I know we've talked about this before on Minx Monday. When people tell you what you should spend your money on and they make fun of you, and they think it's ridiculous. I love the pre-love market. I love the pre-love market for so many different reasons. You can find amazing handbags. Sometimes the handbags on there are in immaculate condition. They have their tags on, they have the stickers on, and they have great pricing. And with those savings, you can end up getting a small leather good. You can go on a trip. You can do whatever else that you want to spend your, you know, the savings on. You know, and it's almost like someone that says that saving money is a stu is stupid. That is the most ignorant thing I've ever heard. There is absolutely absolutely nothing wrong with saving any type of money on anything, be it luxury goods or anything else, you know, and, um, when it comes to, when it comes to the, like you said, with the pre-love market, if, especially if it's your first handbag and if you're undecided or maybe it's not going to be a forever handbag, why not go, why not go the pre-love route? You know what I mean? But when someone sits there and they try to make fun of you, don't don't pay attention to it. You can do the grown-up thing and walk away. Uh, of course, I didn't do that. You know, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Um, but don't you know? Don't entertain it. And if anything, it's whatever makes your heart sing because your opinion is the only one that matters. It is your money. It's gonna be your handbag, and you're going to enjoy it, not them. You know. And even if you try to explain yourself, which you don't need, you don't owe them an explanation. Um, they're not gonna see it the way that you see it, especially if they're not, you know, if they're if they're not crazy about handbags or anything like that. So I say, don't pay attention to them. You do you, you get your first handbag on the pre-love market and hopefully you get exactly what it is that you are looking for. But don't pay attention to, to the coworkers. Coworkers, I swear. <laughs> they, <laughs> they have, I feel like they have the most opinions, you know, especially when, when you don't ask for their advice. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. And nope, you do you and don't even think about, don't even entertain the uh, the co-workers or what they're saying no not even worth it so hopefully that was able to answer your question uh, all right next one from Louisa Strasser hopefully I said that correctly I'm a uni student and I'm starting my internship at Audi soon and I wanted to get a Neverfull for it. Congratulations. Uh, my mind was set on the Neverfull MM in Damia Ben because it's so carefree. But recently I went to the store to check them out and I really like the monogram Neverfull in GM as well. As I'm traveling every weekend back home, the GM would be perfect, but I'm scared that it would be too big for work. Which bag would you go for first? Uh, this is a fabulous question. Okay, so first you were thinking about getting the Neverfull MM and Damia Ben because it's carefree. And then you went to the store and you liked the Neverfull GM in the monogram, uh, but you think that it might be too big. Um, okay, so... I, you know, I really like the GM size. I like it because I feel that it's a little bit more versatile in the sense that you can always cinch in the sides. So if you want it to be a little bit smaller, because uh, I also find it to be a very big handbag, um, you know, but I know a lot of people use the GM for work, uh, but you can always cinch in the sides, which makes it even better. And it makes it a little bit more secure. So you don't have to worry about someone reaching into your handbag. Um, and the MM, the Neverfull and the Damia Ben, even though I do love the Damia Ben, if you are going to use it every day, it might end up being a little bit uncomfortable only because of the color treated leather. It might end up digging into your shoulder, uh, especially as I mentioned before, if you're gonna use it every single day. So that's just something to take into consideration, even though it is very carefree. Uh, personally, I would end up going for the MM in the monogram because I feel that it's the best of bo both worlds. It's not too big. 
and uh, you don't have to cinch in the sides and it's still very, very comfortable. But between the two that you are looking at, uh, both are great decisions. Like I said, people, a lot of people that I know use the GM for work because they love the fact that it can put so many items inside. Um, but out of the two, I, I would end up getting the GM because of that, because the fact that you can end up cinching in the sides, make it a little bit more versatile and it's a lot more comfortable than the Demi Ben. Uh, so hopefully that was able to answer your question and congratulations on whichever one you decide to, uh, to add to your collection. Next question from Yuve. What do you do with a bag that you no longer love and use but cannot seem to get rid of? I've tried selling this bag multiple times, even at an 80% loss. Should I bury it deep in my wardrobe and forget about it or force myself to wear it? Uh, love this question. Uh, okay, so you no longer use it, you don't like it, and you've tried to get rid of it even at a loss, and um, should you bury it deep in your wardrobe or force yourself to use it? Uh, in the past, uh, I actually, I had a bag that I wasn't crazy about. I tried to use it over and over and over again, and every time I would use it, I would actually get in a bad mood because I focused so much on my non-love for the handbag. So I definitely don't recommend that. Um, you can end up burying it deep in your wardrobe, but to be honest, what I would end up doing, and I know some of you might cringe at this, uh, I like to be able to give that handbag a second life by repurposing and doing some type of DIY project with the material from the handbag. Of course, it depends on the size of the handbag, but you can make bookmarks, you can make keychains, um, you can end up making a cute little stool if it's a larger handbag and just kind of put the material over, especially if you're still a really big fan of the fashion house that the handbag is from. So I would give the bag a second life or a second chapter by DIYing something and making something I don't know, make something a little bit different um, that you can still end up enjoying, but maybe not necessarily the handbag. Uh, I know everyone is different, um, but I know we've also talked about you know, how people repurpose handbags and they turn them into other things that aren't necessarily a purse or anything like that. And I really like that option, uh, you know, and uh, <laughs> sometimes I can be very crafty. So getting those DIY skills and, you know, making something else out of the material, I think would be a really great way to go. Um, you know, but if it's between those two options that you gave me, um, like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try to use it anymore. It might end up, uh, you might end up like myself and might be in a bad mood using it because you don't, you're not a fan of the handbag anymore. You could do that or you can always donate it or you can give it to, um, you know, a family member or a friend that maybe really likes the handbag. You could also do that, you know, that way they can enjoy, um, a really nice handbag. So hopefully those, uh, those options were able to give you, um, a little bit of advice. Next question from Beauty Bridge. How do you feel about the new Chanel Deauville leather tote with studs? I was never a fan of the Deauville tote in the past until I saw it in all leather. I think it's stunning and I may need to come off Van Island for this. LOL. Uh, this is a fantastic question and the new Chanel Deauville leather tote with the studs. Uh, there are two sizes available. The first one coming in at $3,500 here in the States and I will insert a picture right now. I think that this is such a beautiful bag. Personally, it's not for me just because I find that the studs are a little too edgy for my own personal taste. I've never really been a big fan of studs, um, but I know that like the Valentino rock studs are a little bit different, but when it comes to studs on a handbag, it's not something that, uh, that I'm attracted to. But if it came, if they made a, a Deauville tote without the studs and they had some other type of material for the double CC and the Chanel logo, I would be all about that handbag. You know what I mean? I think that uh, I'm really curious how it's going to wear over time because the, the Deauville is usually known for wearing uh, a little bit easier, a little bit quicker on the corners. But seeing as how this is all leather and it's the calfskin leather, uh, I think that it'll be very durable over time. Uh, but uh, of course, it's going to be a little bit heavier than the ones that are made out of the cloth material, the tweed or the raffia. But still, I think that this is a gorgeous bag. And I think it has a pretty good price point for the fact that it is an all leather uh, tote from Chanel. Because we all know that when it comes to Chanel, their handbags can be extremely pricey when it comes into all, an all leather bag. But um, yeah, I don't know. There's something about it. Uh, I Hopefully they end up coming up with one without the studs, but the studs is a nice, uh, if that's something that you like, it's a fresh new take on it. And um, it's not too, it's not too, too edgy either. You know what I mean? It's just not, it's, it's a little too edgy for my own taste, but it's not to the point where you have studs everywhere and it's just overwhelming or anything like that. 
I think that it was tastefully done as far as how the studs are. You know, it's not uh, it's not too in your face and it's not too busy. So um, I think it's beautiful, but it's personally not for me. Uh, but if it makes your heart sing, absolutely go for it. I think it is gorgeous. Uh, so hopefully that was able to answer your question. Next question from Jean Miner. What are your thoughts on the new Clapton? I love that it is a crossbody, but not sure if it's too similar to the Pichette Matisse since I already have this bag. Do you think it's different enough to add to my collection? A uh, fantastic question, and the Louis Vuitton Clapton uh, was released, I believe it was a week and a half ago or two weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and it's available only in the Damia bin, and it comes in three different colors, and I will insert a picture right now. The Clapton comes in at $1,950 here in the States, and it is very similar to the Pichette Matisse. They both are crossbody bags, as you mentioned. They both have uh, organization, organizational pockets, although I feel that the Clapton has uh, a little bit more. I also feel that it's a little bit more of a, uh, a luxurious um, spin on the Pichette Matisse because this one does have the leather flap on top that the Pichette Matisse doesn't have since that one is the all canvas uh, version. Um, but what I really like about this bag is that it is a very Available only in the Damia Ben. You know what I mean? It's not it's not Damia Zor, it's not Monogram or anything like that. It is just Damia Ben and the fact that you have those three beautiful colors to choose from. I feel makes uh, the bag even more beautiful. Um, and even though it is somewhat similar, as I said before, to the same silhouette that the Pochette Matisse has, I feel that it's kind of the same thing when it comes to uh, someone getting a handbag in two different prints. Even though they're very similar, or it's the exact same handbag, when it comes to two bags being two different prints, it makes a world of difference. At least that's what I feel, because it gives your overall outfit a completely different look. Uh, so if you're a huge fan of Damia Ben, if you like the three colors that you get to choose from. I mean, that rose ballerine is stunning, uh, or that pink is stunning, uh, then I say go for it because it is similar, especially if you really like the Pochette Matisse and maybe if you've been thinking, uh, you know, I've been very hopeful that someday they'll have one come out in the Demi Ben version, but maybe this is the closest uh, version that we'll get to a Demi Ben Pochette Matisse. Um, but I think it's great. Like you said, it's very, very versatile, uh, especially for the price point that it has, uh, but uh, it does have a lot to offer. So I think it is stunning and if it makes your heart sink, go for it. Next question from Katie G. I've recently been looking for a small catch-all small leather good. I really like the mini pochette in Damia Ben, but the chain attached to it drives me crazy. I don't like it at all. My question is, would you ever remove the chain from the mini pochette like you did with your key pouch, or would you advise against it? Uh, this is an awesome question, and uh, here I have the mini pochette in the monogram for uh, further eye candy. I don't know why I didn't bring out the, uh, the Damia Ben one. Um, but the way that I see it is, if you really like the shape that it has, and this definitely ends up fitting quite a bit in here, if you can make a small alteration to the point where it ends up suiting your lifestyle even better, I say go for it. Because just like you mentioned, that's what exactly what I ended up doing with the clay uh, in the Emprunt version. I think it's beautiful. You know, I really like the leather and I like the shape that it has, but that chain was just driving me up the wall. So by removing the chain, I was able to uh, add a lot more items in there that I wanted to, and I feel that I get more joy out of using it when I do use it. So if that's the same type of scenario, then I would end up uh, removing the chain but in the event that you decide to sell the item in the future if it doesn't end up working out for you if you lose the chain or if something happens to the chain you wouldn't be able to get anywhere close to what you would have gotten if the item still had the, uh, the chain attached to it so it's all personal preference uh, so I would uh, I would end up doing it if you see it as a forever item something that no matter what you'll end up using you know for many many years to come or if uh, you're not too worried about the uh, the resale value of it then I would end up doing it but if you're unsure sure about you know how long this item is going to stay in your collection and you still possibly want to sell it in the future then I would definitely advise against it. But um, taking off the chain from the clay was by far one of the best decisions that I ever did. And I'm actually looking forward to doing it on the on the red clay that I have. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. Uh, all right next one from Lux Lab Life. I recently purchased my first item from Hermes, a twilly that reminded me of Vegas where I had my honeymoon. I know Hermes is sort of notorious for bad customer service experiences. However, mine was very good. I literally called the store and left a message to see if they had the item in stock and got a call less than an hour later that they did not, but they would order it from another store and call me when it was in. 
The lady was very sweet and said she would love to meet me in person and was happy that she could get me the, the right item in the right color for my first Hermes piece. It was completely different from what I was expecting. My question is, have you ever had a very good customer service experience at a store that is notorious for bad service? Tell us about it. This is an awesome question and first and foremost, congratulations on your first item from Hermes and I'm so happy to hear that you had a wonderful experience and that the sales associate went above and beyond to get the item uh, that you were looking for. And, um, okay, so have I had very good customer service experience at a store that is notorious for bad service? Yes. And mine was also Hermes. Um, I have had uh, amazing customer service at Hermes, and I've had some that's um, nothing to write home about either. Uh, but uh, one particular instance that comes out is um, I was actually looking for a gift, and I went into the Hermes store at Fashion Valley in San Diego, and I went in there and I was kind of unsure about what I wanted to get. I mean, I had somewhat of an idea, but I was all over the place, super indecisive. And when I was talking to the associate there, he was so incredibly sweet. We talked about, um, we talked about the gift. It was for my brother. We talked about, um, handbags. We talked about fragrances. It was like for a second, um, it's going to sound so ridiculous, but for a second, it almost felt like I worked there type of environment. You know what I mean? Like we just got along fabulously and, uh, I don't know. It just, it was such a wonderful experience, uh, compared to some of the other Hermes stores that I, <laughs> that I have had the opportunity of visiting that weren't as warm and friendly or anything like that. And, um, what also happened in that same trip is that there was a lady in there who was trying to decide between, between two different different handbags. She didn't know which one she wanted to get. And he came in and he said, hey, let me ask your opinion. What do you think about these two bags? So that's why I was saying that it felt like I worked there for a hot second because I was giving her my my opinion on both bags, um, you know, and she was like, can you, you know, what are the pros and cons that you see? And it was just, it was such a wonderful afternoon. I don't know, I think I was in there for like, I don't know, two hours. It felt like two hours, uh, but I had so, so much fun. And I really wish that that was the same type of experience not necessarily helping people or giving them my opinion, but I mean, just having that type of, um, having that type of, uh, atmosphere when you go into any luxury store or, or any store in general, just the fact that it was just such a wonderful experience that I will never forget. So yes, same thing. Uh, mine was Hermes. Um, and then after that I went into a different one and it was the complete opposite. <laughs> so <laughs> it wasn't the best. Uh, but yeah, that's what ended up happening to me. But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this. Have you had the same thing happen at a store where it's known for having bad customer service and you had the exact opposite? I would love to know in the comment section down below. Uh, all right. And then the last question is from Diane Palmenter. Hopefully I said that correctly. When I got my Neverfull, I saw a recommendation on YouTube to get a smaller organizer. My Neverfull is the Damien Ben GM. The recommendation was to get the MM size organizer so you will have room to cinch the bag if you wanted to. Now I've heard it's not recommended to cinch the Damien Ben canvas because it will cause it to crack. My question is, should I get the GM organizer so I can keep the shape and just not cinch in the bag or should I keep what I have and not worry about the shape of the Neverfull? Are you confused now? <laughs> LOL. Great question, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, okay, so you don't know if you want to go for uh, the GM organizer to keep the shape, but you can't cinch it in, or should you just keep the bag the way that it is and not worry about the shape? Um, I feel that if you end up going for the organizer, it's kind of the best of both worlds, uh, especially if you're still undecided on what it is that you want to um, what it is that you want to carry in your handbag. So let's say that the days that you want to carry a little bit more, you want a little bit more organization in the GM, you can end up carrying that organizer and you don't have to worry about cinching in the sides. And then on the days that you want to be able to cinch it in, you can just take out the organizer. So that's what I would end up doing. Like I said before, if you're very, if you're undecided on which way you want to go. Um, but, um, you know, I've had great success with the organizer inside of the Neverfull keeping its shape because you guys all saw a few weeks ago when I showed you my, um, my Demi Azure never full and that thing was all lumpy and it was kind of all over the place, but I've also had it for a hundred years, you know, and I've put that thing, <laughs> I put that thing through the ringer. So it also depends on how much uh, you end up using uh, the GM never full, but I think best of both worlds would go, uh, would be to go for the organizer in my opinion. So hopefully that was able to help. 
All right, you guys, that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some awesome questions this week. Uh, now, for this week's lineup, I have a Is It Worth It video on the Louis Vuitton Speedy Bandolier. I'm really excited to share my thoughts on it, although I'm sure a lot of you already know how I feel about the bag. Uh, so that's probably going to go up either Wednesday or Thursday. And then the third video that I have, it's going to be a very short video. I'm going to call it kind of like a bonus video on uh, removing the chain from the emprunt clay from Louis Vuitton. Uh, now, kind of like what I talked about uh, earlier on in the video, um, usually when it comes to removing anything off of, uh, off of anything, it's because I consider it a forever piece. And usually forever pieces, I end up hot stamping them. So I haven't had the opportunity to do that, but I love this item. I love the color. I love the shape of it. I'm not crazy about the chain, so I know that I will get a lot more use out of it if I take that off, but I thought it would be a really fun video to show you guys how uh, how I end up removing it uh, because I did it once upon a time on a previous Minx Monday. I think it was like a year, a year and a few months ago now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so kind of like a refresher on how I ended up doing it, and um, hopefully it might end up helping someone out there if you guys are thinking about doing the same thing. So that will be the bonus video, and as far as another, if I have uh, another video up, I'm not too sure, um, but... Either way, you guys will see me a few times this week. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I will see you guys later this week. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.